Hey guys, what is up? Dave here coming back to you with another tier list video. Now I've already gone ahead and added everything to never played, but as you can see, this video is all about game consoles. These are my, this is the list of every game console I've ever played. Uh, I took out the ones I've never played and I did take some liberties with, oh wait, Hudson soft, turbo graphics. Anyway, I did take some liberties, like the Magnavox Odyssey. They don't have the Odyssey 2 here listed, so I'm going to talk about the Odyssey 2 with this. They don't have the, Com uh, the Commodore 64. This isn't the right photo, so I thought it was wrong. Um, other than that, everything here I've played, everything here I've owned, um, even the Nokia N-Gage, I had one of those. Let's go through, and I'm going to rank my favorite game consoles using pretty much this list. So we're going to start right off with the Magnavox Odyssey. I have the Odyssey 2. I'm trying to put myself back in the frame of thought of when this thing came out. It would have blown my mind. It's got a keyboard, the Odyssey 2. We're calling it the Odyssey 2. The Odyssey 2 is kind of like a mini computer. You have a full keyboard. You can uh, do your own stuff on it. I have the game. I have a couple game cartridges for it. My favorite game so far is Thunderball. It's just a cool overall little system. Um, but I don't really have much more to say about it because mine only worked for about two weeks and then it died. Don't know what happened. Oh well. I didn't play that either. Uh, next up, Atari Twenty Six Hundred. There's a lot of games for it. It's very basic. And I understand for the time this blew people's minds, it was really kind of the first at-home true console besides Pong, but Pong was only one game. Atari was the first real thing where you could like have different cartridges at home. Very cool system. I like it. I would never play one on purpose. Like I have one of the Atari flashbacks. Those things are cool. But other than that, I can't think of a time when... If there's an NES or an Atari 2600, I'm going to pick the NES, for example. Cool console. I understand its history and effect on gaming. I'm just going to put it in C tier. The Nintendo Game & Watch. Again, kind of like the Atari, you can't really do much with a Game & Watch. There were only They were basically handhelds where you couldn't play any other game except the one that came already pre-installed. So realistically, these things were like McDonald's toys on steroids that you were buying from Nintendo. Cool concept. I really like the fact that they uh, made portable gaming a thing, but in all honesty, eh, I would never own one on purpose unless somebody gave it to me as a gift. Let's go with the Commodore 64. I love the Commodore 64. I think it's cool. Again, it's basically a computer where you can write your own programs and stuff. When I bought mine, I bought it from a Salvation Army store, complete in the box. Very cool. It had the original receipt from the uh, original purchaser who bought it from a furniture store in Dayton, Ohio. For those of you who don't know, I live in Ohio. So I thought that was pretty cool. And then even on top of that, when I actually pulled the Commodore 64 out, there was a big yellow like a paper tablet. Whatever they call those. Like a steno pad. And it had a bunch of different mathematical programs written down on it. So whoever owned this thing was really freaking smart, first of all. Would love to figure out who owned it because I have all their programs they ever wrote, at least the ones that they wrote down. And I would love to learn to actually use it. I have to repair mine because just like my uh, Magnavox Odyssey, after about a month of getting to toy around with it, it stopped working. So, oh well. Nintendo Entertainment System. I have a soft spot. The NES is awesome. I love the NES. It's one of my favorite consoles to ever exist. I think it was my very first console uh, that my parents ever bought me. They got it for me for Christmas. Um, I'm not sure if it was before or after getting my first computer. It might have been like 96, 97. They bought me the, my first Nintendo. And that's really what started my gaming time frame, basically. The Atari Lynx. There's not many games for it, but I love my Atari Lynx. Uh, I have Clax. Clax is a classic arcade game. One of my favorite arcade games that I've ever played. But it chews through batteries. I get it. It's old. Whatever. 
choose through batteries though and there's not many games for it so it's really easy to complete the collection if you want to collect games for it but in the end not great nintendo game boy pocket and nintendo game boy i'm gonna do all the game boy well those two at the same time because they're kind of the same so the nintendo game boy was like the first of the first like that was the nintendo game boy like it was the one that created the nintendo game boy then the pocket just made it smaller Nintendo Game Boy, the big gray one, was the first Game Boy I ever owned. I didn't get a pocket until a couple years ago when I bought one on my own. Um, either way, really cool system. Um, I have a lot of memories of mainly just Pokemon games, but there were other games I played. Hell, the Mary-Kate and Ashley game for the Game Boy Color was badass. So was the Sabrina the Teenage Witch game. Like, there were a lot of good games if you just gave them a chance and you didn't stick to, like, oh, that one has Mario in the name of it, so I'm going to play it. Like, if you were willing to be like, yeah, that game's like 99 cents in the dollar bin, I'm going to give it a shot, and then you bought the Sabrina the Teenage Witch game, yeah, you would have had fun with it. Let's go with the SNES. We're going to do these both at the same time. I'm going to go B tier. The SNES doesn't really hold a spot in my heart for very much, and I haven't owned one for very long. I only got one about a year ago from a flea market. I don't even remember what game it came with. Um, I played it for a couple minutes. But in all honesty, there's no point in me hooking up one of these or like even hooking up one of these anymore because I can just emulate on literally any system I'm on. There. If you own an SNES, it's because you want to play on true hardware or just the nostalgia of it. Personally, it's not a console that I would ever enjoy myself or like have out on display that I own. Well, I would probably have it out on display, but it would never get played, which is kind of sad. So that's actually why I'm selling mine. My friend's going to buy it off of me because they want one for the nostalgia of it because they had one when they were a kid. I had this and these. I didn't have one of these. I skipped this. So for the nostalgic of it, I'm going to sell it to them, and I already know they're going to be happy with it. There weren't many games for it. Not much of a reason for it to exist. Eh. I played Doom on it. That's about it. And the Sega CD. It just sucks. The Game Gear. It also kind of sucks, but it's portable. But I still enjoy the Game Gear. It chews through batteries, though. Just like the Atari Lynx. But I get it. It's old. The Genesis Gen 2 and Gen 3. I'm going to go B on these. I like the Sega Genesis. I had one when I was a kid. Uh, played hours upon hours of Sonic the Hedgehog. Still not a console that I think I would pull the dust, pull out of a closet, dust it off, and plug it in and play it. If I go to someplace like 16-bit Barcade... They have the uh, Genesis Minis hooked up, and they're modded, and they have like every game under the sun on them. Those are cool. But realistically, I'm never going to purposely play a Sega Genesis. I'm going to download an emulator if I want to play Sonic the Hedgehog. And even then, I've never done that. Oh. Game Boy Color. I loved when they added color to the Game Boy. I mean, it really brought my Pokemon games to life. There were a lot of other cool games I enjoyed. And again, it was one of those consoles that if I had allowance money of like 10 bucks, I could go down to the store and buy $5 bin games, and usually they were fun. So N64 is GOAT. That's truly what started to get me hooked to gaming, and as a kid, I think the biggest library of games I ever owned was the N64. San Francisco Rush, Rush 2, Rush 2049... Uh, Super Mario 64, oh my god, such a classic game. To this day, people are playing it left, right, and center. Um, Mario Kart, that's what started my true love of arcade racers with like items and stuff like that. Like, There's just so much that I loved about the N64 that to this day, I have two of them behind me, and I do hook them up, unlike the, SNES, or, uh, unlike the NES and Sega Genesis. I do hook up my N64 once in a while to my projector that I keep in my office, and I play it for a couple hours and drink a beer or two. Do I want to start doing streams that way? Yeah, but am I allowed to drink beers on stream? I don't know. 
Uh, somebody let me know down in the comments. It was a flop. I own one. It's in my attic. It was a flop. A Sega Nomad. It could play Genesis games from what I remember, but realistically it was just another Game Gear. Eh. Sega Saturn, I actually never played one. I owned one, it didn't work. So I, I can't really see. say. The SNK Neo Geo Pocket Color. This thing, awesome little handheld. I never had the black or I never had the black and white version of it that so that's why I put it in like the never played section. It's somewhere in here. Here it is, the Neo Geo Pocket. I had the color. Um really interesting way I got it actually. One of my friends owned a game shop and he had a bunch of broken consoles laying around and just gave them to me. That's how I got my Neo Geo Pocket Color. And then a couple weeks later, I bought uh, a game for it. And it lasted me a very long time, actually. I played it a lot uh, until I finally got like a gaming PC that was a proper setup and kind of forgot about it. If you ask me to go pull it out of my storage now, I don't know where it is. I know I still have it. I never sold it, never got rid of it. I just don't know where it is. Ah, the PlayStations. Uh, we're going to go B tier. Actually, technically, this one I've still never owned to this day. I want one, but I, to this day, I've never owned one. The big fat boy PlayStation, though, I owned a few of those, and I had, the, uh, I had the Game Shark attachment for the back of it and everything. I very much enjoyed my Sony PlayStation 1. It got hours and hours of play. The Tony Hawk games were fantastic, but in all honesty, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit here while we're on the subject of PlayStation. PS2 is GOAT. It's almost GOAT. It's not quite S-tier GOAT, but it's GOAT. Um, hours upon hours of gameplay, and then when I discovered Free McBoot, that only made it better because I could just burn games to my own DVDs. The PS2 to this day in my household gets a couple hours of play every couple of months i'll definitely hook one up i'll play it for a couple of hours and i'll enjoy it but even still it's starting to fall into the same category of i can emulate this because even the spare seven dollar computer not seven twenty seven dollar computer that i bought from savers and just threw a gtx 960 into even that can emulate PS2 games at 4K without any problems now. So it's starting to fall into the same category of, I don't really know what I'm going to do with this thing, and I probably won't pull it out as often. Xbox. Now, I'll never own one on purpose. And to be honest, I don't really enjoy the Xbox very much. I don't like the controller. It's uncomfortable. And I just, it just wasn't a console that I ever enjoyed. Game Boy Advance. Funny thing about Game Boy Advance is, yes, I owned one. Yes, I played games on it. You know what games I played on my Game Boy Advance? Never Advance games. I just pulled my Pokemon games out of storage. I had Game Boy Advance games. You know what I always went back to? My Game Boy games. Oh, this thing's one of my favorites. But, same thing, I did have uh, Game Boy Advance games for it, I just never really played it. But it was still a really cool console to have, and I'm actually, I'm going to put that in C tier, because I never really played it. It just wasn't a console that I had readily available and enjoyed. Now, GameCube. I love the GameCube. Recently, I started really looking into emulation for my computer that's downstairs connected to my main TV. And I realized very quickly when I started downloading emulators and games that while I always say N64 is my favorite console or PS2 is my favorite console, by sheer number of games that I wanted to download and play on it, Nintendo GameCube is my favorite console. Burnout 2, Point of Impact, fantastic game on the GameCube. Um, Super Mario Sunshine. I never played it, and I started playing it, and I enjoy the hell out of it. I'm playing a modded version of it, but still, uh, Super Mario Sunburn. 
Um, all the modded versions of uh, there's a bunch of mods you can do with Super Smash Bros. Brawl, and like a lot of the codes for it are public when it comes to gecko codes on Dolphin. That's a fantastic, you know, way of playing things. Double Dash is freaking hard. Double Dash is probably the hardest Mario Kart out there. You give me a controller on Mario Kart 8 Deluxe on the Nintendo Switch, I'll be in the top three nearly every race against any of my friends on 150 cc i haven't really had much time of playing 200 cc so i don't know if i'd be good at it but as far as playing mario kart double dash is the hardest one and i am enjoying the hell out of it i downloaded tony hawk's underground 2 and underground 1 those are fantastic the sheer number of games in my gamecube folder for roms of games i actually want to play is larger than any other console i've downloaded games for the GameCube is just a fantastic console. GBASP. I got one. It wasn't very special. Yeah, it had a light-up screen, but that's about it. I didn't like it. I still have it. I don't like it, though. The Sega Dreamcast. Another one of my favorite consoles of all time. Is it because of the piracy? Yeah, but I did still have a very large library of games growing up before I learned how to burn CDs for the console specifically. Rush 2049 was at its best on the Dreamcast. Um, Sonic Adventure, fantastic game, but sometimes a little wonky. And there were just so many games. It was such a good console. Oh boy, I'm yawning. Drink water, boys and girls. Good for you. Anyway, sorry about the yawn. I'm tired. I ate a whole little Caesar's pizza to celebrate getting a job. Anyway, um, yeah, I never played much of the SP, so whatever about it. The Xbox 360. I didn't enjoy it. I never enjoyed it. It wasn't that great of a console for me. I was, at that time... My loyalty lines, I started to understand them, and I started to enjoy Nintendo and Sony PlayStation more. So, realistically, the 360 kind of just collected dust. I had one, I just didn't play it nearly at all. DS. I only ever used my Nintendo DSs to play Mario Kart and Ridge Racer. That's really it. I played two games on the Nintendo DS, and that's it. So, realistically, it wasn't a console that I ever truly enjoyed. But man, was I good at Ridge Racer. I wish there was an online component to it. Um, Nintendo Wii. Wii Mini Go C because I couldn't jailbreak it. Well, you couldn't jailbreak it, but recently now you can. I've also, I've had a Wii Mini. I didn't play it because I had a modded Wii. So first console that's kind of the same, but split between areas. And even then with the Nintendo Wii, I played mostly my GameCube games. Played mostly Wii Sports and Wii Sports Resort. There just wasn't much to it for me. And again, you know, I'm going to put these... In the same area as the DS because they got the same treatment as the DS. Nintendo Switch, while I'm next to it. Know where it goes. Go C tier. There is no difference for me that I can play this one on a TV and this one I can't. I've played my Nintendo Switch a handful of times. My Nintendo Switch has been in a cupboard for now at least two and a half years. I just haven't played it. There's been no reason for me to because I don't need to. I just... I played Mario Kart for a couple weeks. And that was it. Now I only play Mario Kart when I go hang out with friends and they have a Switch. There's no reason for me to have a Switch. Might as well sell mine. I never own that. PS3. It's another C tier. 
I really just never played mine very much. I didn't have one until about the PS4 came out, and the only thing that was ever good about it was, like, skate and the jailbreak ability. Even then, I would mostly just play computer gaming. And with that, we're actually going to go computer. And S tier. You can play literally anything on a computer as long as your hardware is good enough. You can emulate games on a computer. You can play games specifically made for computer. You can voice chat in those games far easier. You don't have to pay for online play in a, on a computer most of the time. Why is this thing looking like it's so quiet? I just noticed that. Is my gain just turned down way low? Who knows? I don't know. I don't understand recording stuff. Anyway, PSP Go. Never played it. PSP. Never played it much. I had them. I had Midnight Club for it, and that was it. Oh, well. I actually never owned one of those. Google Stadia. Never owned one, and never will, because they canceled the service. The Xbox One. The only reason for me to have an Xbox is Forza, and I can get Forza for PC. So, there's that. That's also going to go here. That's going to go here. The Wii U. C tier. There's nothing special really about the Wii U for me that the Wii can't do. So, not enjoyed much. I very much enjoyed the Ouya and the idea behind it. It was an Android-based game console. There's a lot of mod support for it for like hardware and overclocking. Very cool little system idea. I wish it would have taken off more. PlayStation 4. The only reason I have PS4s is because I bought them to repair them and resell. <laughs> That's it. Oh, PlayStation. PlayStation TV. I actually never owned that. I didn't even know it was a thing. PlayStation Vita. Same thing as PSP. I had it. I never played it much. I heard it's great for emulation because the battery actually lasts, unlike PSPs, which the battery is basically garbage. I don't know what that is. The Xbox, we already did that. It goes here because I only play... I would only play Forza on it. There's nothing on an Xbox besides Forza that I think I would enjoy. And even then, like I said, I can download Forza for computer. Game & Watch 2020. I do actually have one of these. They fall in line in the same spot as the Game & Watch originally. It was just a reboot to make some money. Switch OLED. This actually goes D tier for me. It. I do not care that it suddenly has a better screen. That was not enough of a reason for the upgrade on it for me. PlayStation 5. I've played one. I do not own one. I don't care. There's nothing on a PlayStation 5 that I can give to me that I would enjoy. The Steam Link. Actually going to give it a B tier because you can put Android on it and turn it into a stream box. That's the only good thing about the Steam Deck. So I was expecting this tier list to take a lot longer than the phone one. The phone manufacturer, I think I was still, you know, wiping the dust off, let's say, of tier list videos. But, you know... We got through this. Let me know what your favorite consoles are down in the description below, including gaming PCs. It's not quite a console, but it's there. Let me know what your favorites were and, you know, maybe if you would do this differently. Uh, and like I even said in the last video, 98% of people who watch my videos are not subscribed. I want to hit 5,000. So there's going to be content this year. I promise. Oh, my God. I might go back and do a little bit of game modding just because i miss it i'll admit it there might be some combat arms stuff coming it all depends on how much free time i have and as some of you know i got kids free time don't exist but now that i don't have a car and i only have a part-time job i got more time to care about videos and i have friends who want to record with me real life friends like i can go hang out at their house and we could set up phones for cameras and actually like record stuff it would be fun as hell we could even start a cooking series if we wanted to because they're teaching me to cook because I make a terrible adult. 
<laughs> anyway, I'm just rambling at this point. I'll talk to you guys later. Hope you guys are enjoying the tier list videos. I'm using these as my way to like get myself back into recording videos, but I'll continue this series as long as, you know, maybe people want it. If you have ideas for tier list videos that you want to see me talk about, leave them in the description down below. Maybe we can even make a custom one. We'll talk Nitto cars. That'd be sweet. <laughs> anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. I'll see what other tier list idea videos there can be, and we'll go from there. But I'll talk to you later. Hope you guys enjoyed. Peace out.